Alhamdulillah, Assalamu Alaikum. Guys, before you watch this video, I need to bring something really important to your attention. We all heard about the, the earthquake that devastated our brothers and sisters in Turkey and northern Syria. Alhamdulillah, the Ummah has come together to do a lot of khair to help them. But we have to also acknowledge that there is a lot more that still needs to be done. So on this channel, we're currently fundraising for humanity care relief. Alhamdulillah, we've raised through our Instagram and YouTube over 50,000 pounds just through you guys. We have a separate fundraiser for just the people that follow our da'wah, Nasir sessions on Instagram. Guys, let's carry on donating so we can help our brothers and sisters. You can see pictures and some video footage of people and families that specifically benefited from the donations that came from you guys. Let's carry on donating, give a little sadaqah before you watch the video. Perhaps due to that donation, this video will benefit you even more, maybe even be the reason why you get accepted into paradise and all your sins to be forgiven. Okay brothers, inshallah today I'm gonna go through a section of a book that a great scholar, Imam Ibn Qayyim, he wrote. It's a section where he brings a hadith from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that instill fear in the heart of a person. They instill fear in the heart of a person. We know that in Al-Islam, we have to have hope in Allah's mercy. We have to have fear in His punishment. Hope in His mercy and fear in His punishment. We have hope for paradise. The fear of the hellfire, hope of earning Allah's pleasure, but fear of disobeying Him and Him being angry and displeased with us. And there has to be a balance between the two. You can't live in hope all the time, thinking that you're going to be forgiven for whatever sin that you do and you carry on sinning with no consequence and no repercussion. Likewise, you can't live thinking that you're going to be destroyed and you're going to go to hell because you've then given up in Allah's mercy. And it is only the disbelievers who give up in the mercy of Allah. We find that in this day and age, a lot of our Muslims have been affected by the Christians. Christians, they've forgotten about the fear of Allah Azza wa Jal. They seem to have forgotten about the fear of Allah. And they live just on hope. For them, they say God is love. And you sit in front of that Christian and you say, well, does God love me? And I'm a Muslim. He'll get stuck. <clears throat> because he knows. For him, God doesn't love one who doesn't believe in his religion. But they will give you this fake description of what God is. God is love. God is peace. God is this. We love one another. And you find that a lot of the Muslims have been affected by this. And the Prophet told us, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that you're going to follow the people that came before you. Even if one of those people that, you're, that came before you was to enter inside of a lizard hole, you would have entered inside of that lizard hole with him. The Sahaba said, Al Yahud wa Nasara, are you talking about the Jews and the Christians? The Prophet said, Faman, who else? So we find that living with them, we've been affected. We think that everything is just okay. A Christian can sell drugs and he can lie and murder and cheat or steal. But except Jesus Christ to be son of God and that's it, you're going to go to paradise. You could be a pedophile, it's okay, you're going to go to paradise as long as you accept Jesus Christ to be son of God. Us Muslims also have taken a leaf out of that book. You can do whatever sin you want, Allah is forgiven. Yeah, it's true he's forgiven, but you're forgetting he's also shadidul iqab. He's also severe. When it comes to his punishment. So today I want to focus on the fear. Because we live as if there is no fear. We're too deep in hope my brothers. We're relaxed. We're too relaxed. And the sins have become too much. They've become too much. And we think that we will not be destroyed. We've just seen an earthquake that took place. Guys, do you know why the earth moves? The earth. Do you know why it moves? When it shakes. Qadr of Allah. Of course it's the Qadr of Allah. But what is the reason why it moves? It moved once at the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. When was it? When the Prophet was climbing the mountain of Uhud. <coughs> when he was climbing the mountain of Uhud with Abu Bakr and Umar and Uthman, what happened? 
But the guys, if I ask a question, you can put your hand up to answer it, yes? Inshallah. We don't shout out. The Prophet ﷺ did what? He was walking up a mountain and the mountain started to shake. And the Prophet told the mountain, stand firm. Uthbut ya Uhud. Stay firm. For stands on top of you a prophet, a martyr, and what? Uh, two martyrs and a, and a Siddiq, a truthful one. Question, why did the earth shake? Anyone know? Put your hands up. Why did the earth shake? Because of sins. No, the Prophet's on top of it. The Prophet is climbing the mountain. Yes. Iman. Pardon? Iman. Who's Iman? Uh, no, so the, the mountain shook because there was. That, that, that wouldn't be the right answer, no. Yes. But why is it scared? The Prophet is on it. Abu Bakr or Umar is on the mountain and it shakes. It was out of happiness. The ulama they mentioned the mountain shook out of joy. The Prophet is on top of me. Allahu Akbar. So then the earth reacts, ya ikhwah. The earth, it reacts. Then Allah did not say. تَكَادُ السَّمَاوَاتِ يَتَفَطَّنَّ مِنْهُ وَتَنْشَقُّ الْأَرْضُ وَتَخِرُّ الْجِبَالُ هَدَّ أَنْدَعُوا لِلرَّحْمَنِ وَلَدَ The mountains want to destroy themselves and the earth wants to split because they say Allah took a son. So the earth wants to react to the evil that takes place on top of it. The earth reacts to the evil that takes place on top of it. And it also felt joy when the khair was on top of it. When there's khair on top of the earth, what happens? The fruits, they come out. The crops, they grow. Right? But when the people, they disobey the earth, what it shakes. The beginning, well, the, the, in, in, in the Quran, what's the first time Allah mentions the earth? Does anyone know? When you look at the Quran, what's the first time Allah mentions the earth? Anyone know? Anyone here memorize the Quran? Any Hufad? Any Hufad of the Quran? You remember? Yes. Okay, the earth, when was it mentioned in the Quran first? Before that. But it's near the beginning, Allah, right? But before that. وَإِذَا قِيلَ لَهُمْ لَا تُفْسِدُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ In Surah Al-Baqarah, the second page, Allah said, when it said to them, don't create corruption on the land. Don't corrupt the earth. Don't sin on the earth. Don't disobey Allah on the earth. Don't go against the messengers on the earth. Don't do bid'ah, don't do shirk, don't do sins. Don't fornicate on this earth. Don't violate the rights of Allah on this earth. Then what was the last time the earth was mentioned, ya ikhwa, in the Quran? وَإِذَا زُلْزِلَتِ الْأَرْضُ زِلْزَالَهَا When the earth is going to shake, a violent shaking. وَإِذَا زُلْزِلَتِ الْأَرْضُ زِلْزَالَهَا and what's going to come out of it? وَيُحَدِّثْ أَخْبَارَهَا It's going to speak and it's going to tell Allah what happened on top of it. So the scholars, they took a fa'idah from this. They said the Qur'an, the first time it mentioned the earth, it was a command. It was a prohibition, so don't commit sins on this earth. And the last time the earth is mentioned is a warning. If you commit sins on this earth, the day is going to come when the earth is going to shake violently. The, the day of judgment. A violent earth shake, earthquake. And on that day, يُحَدِّثُ أَخْبَارَهَا It's going to speak and say, Ya Allah, this person done zina on top of me. Ya Allah, this person used to walk towards evil on top of me. This person oppressed on top of me. Stole on top of me. Ya Allah, this person didn't pray to you on top of me. So, ya ikhwa, the earth, it reacts to the sins of the people. And naam. It punishes people. Now, I'm not here saying that our brothers and sisters, the ones who passed away innocently, were being punished. Because we have another hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, which is what? That anyone who dies with a building collapsing on top of him, he dies the death of a martyr in the akhirah. So, we hope for them, what? That they were martyrs. But it's a warning for us. It's a warning for us to take heed. It's a warning for us to take heed, ya ikhwah. So, 
if there was ever a time to take the concept of sin seriously, it's now, my brothers. ظهر الفساد في البر والبحر Corruption spread in the land and the sea بما كسبت أيدي الناس Because of what our hands have done. So for that reason, Imam Ibn Qayyim, Rahmanullah Ta'ala, Bismillah. He, um, he brings a hadith about fear. I'm just going to read some of these hadith to you, inshallah. Just also to mention, shockingly, Imam Ibn Qayyim in this book also has a chapter on earthquakes. He has a chapter just on earthquakes. And I think it's very important considering this day and age that we're living in and what we've seen recently. And I would request you all, if you can, Sunday, inshallah ta'ala, in a masjid called Masjid Dar salam in West London, Southall, which is literally right on the edge of London. It's, not, it's on the M25, maybe about 35 minute drive from here. I'd really love you brothers to come if you can. It's going to be on Sunday, 7pm. It's the last lecture that I'm giving before I leave the country again. And considering the relevance, I think it would be a travesty to not turn up, inshallah. على كل إمام ابن القيم سز وقيل للحسن إمام الحسن البصري رحمه الله تعالى it was said to him نراك طويل البكاء they said we see you crying a lot oh حسن فقال حسن responded explaining why he cries he said أخاف أن يطرحني في النار ولا يبالي he said I'm scared that Allah is just going to toss me into the fire and not going to care Imam al-Hasan al-Basri, a man who, when he used to speak, they said he speaks as if he went to see Jannah and Jahannam and came back and told us about it. A man who would spend the night praying one time, he was so tired he couldn't spend the night doing tahajjud prayer. He couldn't stand. So he lay in his bed and he refused to fall asleep. And he said to his nafs, you prevented me from standing in night to pray, so I will prevent you from sleeping. And he's saying, I cry a lot. And the reason I cry is because I'm scared Allah is going to throw me in hell and not care. وَسَأَلَ رَجُلٍ الْحَسَنِ Another man came to Al-Hasan al-Basr and he said, يَا أَبَا سَعِيدٍ كَيْفَ يَصْنَعُ بِمُجَالَسَةِ أَقْوَامٍ يُخَوِّفُونَنَا What do we do about a group of people? Every time we sit with them, they scare us. Hellfire, the grave, the angel of death, the punishments. They scare us. حَتَّى تَكَادُ قُلُوبُنَا تَطِيرُ They scare us to the point where we feel like our hearts are about to leave our chests. فَقَالْ Al-Hassan said, وَاللَّهِ لَا أَنْ تَصْحَبَ أَقْوَامًا He said, I swear by Allah for you to sit and become friends with the people. يُخَوِّفُونَكَ حَتَّى تُدْرِكَ أَمْنًا A people that when you sit with them, they scare you. They scare you so much that because of that fear on the day of judgment, you reach safety. It's better for you than you sit with the people, you aminunaka, that when you sit with them, they make you feel safe. They tell you stories about good and whatever have you. But on the day of judgment, you're not safe. You actually get thrown into destruction and the things that will scare you. So better you sit today and you be scared. So that you can be safe tomorrow as opposed to being safe today. And on the day of judgment coming out of your grave to realize, oh wait, I haven't done enough to get to Jannah. We'll mention some hadith now. في الصحيحين in Al-Bukhari and Muslim. سمعت رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول وسام بن زيد he said, I heard the messenger say, يجاء بالرجل يوم القيامة A man is going to be brought on the day of judgment فيلقى في النار He's going to be tossed into the fire فتندلق أقتاب وطنه His internal testines are going to come out of his stomach فيدور في النار كما يدور الحمار برحاه He's going to go around his intestines His intestines have come out of his stomach and he's just going around them, circulating around them like a donkey فَيُطِيفُ بِهِ أَهْلُ النَّارِ Oh, the people in hellfire are going to come to this man. They're going to be shocked. They're going to walk around him. فَيَقُولُونَ They're going to say, يَا فُلَان Oh, so and so. مَا أَصَابَكْ What happened to you? أَلَمْ تَكُنْ تَأْمُرُنَا بِالْمَعْرُوفِ When you the one that used to tell us to do good? When you the one that used to say, Hey, behave, do khayr, pray, lower your gaze. 
How are you burning in the hellfire? <coughs> Fayaqul, he will say, Kuntu amurukum bil ma'roof. I used to tell you to do good. Wala atihi. And I never used to come with the good myself. Wa anhaakum anil munkar. And I used to prohibit you and stop you from doing sins. Wala atihi. And I didn't used to stop the sins myself. And that's a lesson for those who command good and they don't do it. And they what? And they don't do it. And that's a lesson for those who command good and they don't do it. By the way, that doesn't mean that you don't tell someone to do something good if you're not doing it yourself as long as you're trying. You may not pray Qiyamul Layl. But you try and you want to and you're trying to build the habit. That doesn't mean you don't say, hey, don't. <coughs> Just because you smoke cigarettes doesn't mean you shouldn't say, hey, youngsters, don't smoke. Because you understand that it's bad. But we're talking about a person in his heart. He's telling, he's trying to pretend, look at me, I'm righteous. And he doesn't really try to fight the evil in himself. He doesn't actually try to do the good. He just wants to look good in front of the people. Look at me, I'm good. Pray. But really, he's a shaitan. وَذَكَرِ إِمَامُ أَحْمَدْ مِنْ حَدِيثِ أَبِي رَافِعِ Imam Ahmed rahimahullah he mentions from a hadith from another sahabi Marra Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam bil baqi' The Prophet came to the graveyard one day Faqal When the Prophet came to the graveyard he said Uffin lak, uffin lak He said uff to you, uff to you You know uff when you get annoyed with someone Fadalantu annahu yuriduni The sahabi said I thought the Prophet was saying it to me Faqal The Prophet said La, no I'm not saying it to you Walakin hadha qabru fulan but I'm referring to the man in his grave. I sent him to collect the sadaqah, the charity, from so and so. And when you collect the charity, brothers, the charity money, it's not yours, is it? The wealth of an orphan, the wealth of the poor person, the wealth of the masjid. He took a small item of clothing for himself. Imagine you bring back all of this wealth in charity, but you took what? A small item of clothing for yourself. Because he took that. The Prophet said he is now wearing an item like that made from fire in his grave. He's a Sahabi, Akhi. At the time of the Prophet, he used to go out and collect charity. One time he took one item of clothing which was not just what about the food and the drug money and the riba and the mortgages and the credit cards and the lying and the cheating borrow money from someone and you don't pay back <coughs> pretending that you may pay people back the money that you owe them but you don't stealing the rights of the people وفي مسند أيضا من حديث أنس بن مالك رضي الله عنه هذا حديث المسلم أم أحمد النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم هي سمرت ليلة أسرى بي على قوم النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم on the night journey when he ascended he said أسرى بي على قوم I came to a people I saw people تقرض شفاههم بمقاريد من النار من نار دو و the lips were being cut with scissors that were made from fire. فقلت, the Prophet said, من هؤلاء? Who are these people? قالوا, the Prophet was told, خطباء من أهل الدنيا These were the speakers from the people of the dunya. كانوا يأمرون الناس بالبر They used to command the people to do good. وينسون أنفسهم And they forgot themselves. They didn't remind themselves. أفلا يعقلون Another hadith, the Prophet said, When I was ascended, when I was taken up to the skies, I came across a people. They had nails that were made from copper. They were scratching their faces and ripping their chests. They were punishing themselves. The Prophet said, Who are these people that are Subjecting themselves to such torture. <coughs> the Prophet said, Ha'ula, these are the ones. They used to backbite. They used to eat 
the flesh of the people. وَيَقَعُونَ فِي أَعْرَاضِهِمْ And they used to talk about their honours. Akhi, a statement that you say, talking about a Muslim backbiting, or a Muslim man, a Muslim woman. Because of it, you rip what? Your face on the You know one of the worst type of backbiting? Is some of us, we backbite a whole nation. Someone will say, oh, Somalis are like this. Someone will say, Pakistanis are like that. You just back by the whole nation. Not just back, but you're actually surrounded. Are they all actually like that? You had a bad experience with one Pakistani, one Somali, one Afghani, one Turkish, one, maybe five, maybe ten. Now you're saying all of them are like, you didn't just back, but you slandered. Imagine that whole nation on the day of judgment comes and says, Ya Allah, this man he spoke about us. Unjustly. <coughs> Aisha radiallahu anha signaled one time to describe one of the Prophet's wives as being short. She didn't even speak, she hand gestured. The Prophet said, Ya Aisha, you said something that if it was mixed with the ocean, it would destroy it. You said something so nasty. She didn't even speak, she signaled with the hand just to show she was short. <coughs> and all day, every day, we just we eat, we eat the flesh of our brothers and sisters. We go onto Twitter. We share, post, slander, we comment, send it on WhatsApp. Let's just say there's a guy on social media. It happens a lot, right? There's these social media scandals. A guy will be maybe exposed justly, unjustly, Allahu Alam, right? Why are you talking about it? Who made you the judge? Who made you the jury? Who made you the executioner? Let's just say that that man did a filthy what? Nasty sin. The hundreds of thousands of people that are talking about him on social media. On the day of judgment, imagine you have to give him good deeds. He's going to go to Jannah anyway. If he was bad, keep your mouth shut and let Allah deal with him. Why do you have to talk? Why do we have to talk, Akhi? The Prophet told us, if you guarantee me that which is between your two lips and that which is between your two thighs, i.e. your tongue and your private parts, I guarantee you Jannah. But some of us talk like we don't want Jannah. And then you say, Akhi, but I'm not lying, it's true what I said about him. And that's what backbiting is. The Prophet said, if you said something true about him, then you backbited. And if it was a lie, you slandered. If it was a lie, that's something else. Who said backbiting has to, is okay if it's the truth? <coughs> backbite is saying about your Muslim brother, ma yakra. What he doesn't like. Another hadith. The Prophet can the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yaktiru an yaqul. The Prophet would say, Allah ya muqallib al qulub. O the one who turns the hearts, thabbit qalbi ala deenik. Keep my heart firm on your deen. The Prophet is speaking about his heart. He's concerned for his heart. And the the hadith said, can. يُكْثِرُ كان النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم يُكْثِرُ أن يقول He used to say a lot A lot A lot Oh Allah the one who turns the hearts Keep my heart firm Keep my heart firm in your deen How are we so confident As to think that what? We're okay we're going to go Jannah <laughs> Our hearts are cool don't worry, I could talk to a girl. We're friends, we're not going to do anything haram. I could hang around with my friends that are drug dealers. It's okay, I know myself, I'm not going to end up taking drugs. Are not scared for your heart? The Prophet is scared for his heart. The Sahaba said, Ya Rasulullah, O Messenger of Allah, Amanna bika wa bima jitta bihi We believed in you and we believed in that which you came with. Fahal takhaf wa alayna Are you scared for us? Are you scared we're going to become misguided? The Prophet said, Naam, I am, yes. The, the Prophet is talking to Abu Bakr. He's talking to Umar. He's talking to Uthman. He's talking to Ali. He's talking to these great men saying, yes, I'm scared for you. I'm scared for you. He said, Inna al-qulub bayna asabi'ayni min asabi'illah. The hearts are between the fingers of Allah 
He tosses and turns those hearts as he wishes. So why don't we ask du'a for guidance? Why aren't we worried about our hearts? وَفِي أَيْضًا عَنْهُ أَنَّ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم قال لجبريل Allah, this one's shocking. The Prophet said to Jibreel, He said, مَا لِي لَمْ أَرَى مِي كَئِيلٍ ضَاحِكًا ضَاحِكًا قَطْ He said, O oh, Jibreel, why is it that I don't see the angel Mikael ever laugh? I never see him smile. And ضَحِك doesn't mean laugh, like ha ha, it just means a smile so big that your teeth can be seen on the silence. Why don't I ever see the angel Mikael, who's the second in command after Jibreel? ضَاحِكَ قَطْ You know what Jibreel said? He said, مَا ضَحِك مُنذُ خُلِقَةِ النَّارِ He said, he's never laughed ever since Allah created the hellfire. Since Allah made the hellfire, he stopped laughing. وفي صحيح مسلم أنه قال قال رسول الله صلى الله رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم the prophet he said يؤتى بأن أمي أهل الدنيا من أهل النار on the day of judgment a man is gonna be brought to the hellfire and he is from the people that's gonna go hell but he had the greatest blessings in this world so maybe he had the cars the money the clothes the women the houses the respect the street cred he had be an umi the most the most blessed the most pleasures I should say rather not blessed but pleasures he had the greatest pleasure from everyone what in the dunya Fayus Baru Finari Sabhaten he's gonna be dipped inside of the hellfire once فيقول, he will say, Allah, Allah will say to him, ثم يقال له يا ابن آدم, O oh son of Adam, هل رأيت خير قط? Have you ever seen any good? Guys, this guy, did he see good in his life? Yes or no? Did he see good? Yes or no? He saw everything. بأنعمي, the Prophet said. The most pleasures he saw in his life. He's dipped into hellfire once. Allah will ask him, Yabna Adam. Or he will be asked rather, Yabna Adam or son of Adam. Hal ra'ayta khayran qat. Have you ever seen good in your life? Hal marra bika na'imun qat. Has any pleasure ever come to you? Fayaqul the man will say, La wallahi. He will say, No, I swear by Allah. Ya Rabb, my Lord, O oh Lord. Guys, is this man lying? Is he lying? He's saying, Wallahi, I never see the khair. And the Prophet said he's the one who received the most blessings. Sorry, the most. He's the one who saw the most pleasures. And he's saying, I never saw a pleasure in my life. The Prophet said he saw the most pleasures. He was put in hellfire once. And he says, Wallahi, I've never seen any good. So is the Prophet telling the truth or is this man telling the truth? So if the Prophet is telling the truth, is this man lying? In front of Allah, on the Day of Judgment. Wallah, he's saying, Ya Rabb, I've never seen any good. Beautiful. The pain of the hellfire is so bad, it wiped out all memory of any good that he ever had. He's not lying. And neither did the Prophet. A'udhu Billah. It's just that he doesn't actually remember hellfire being dipped in it once. Akhi is so horrific. Dipped once in, out. It's so horrific that it will wipe out any memory of any joy. My brothers, when you go and sin, alright, a sin that we do quite often with this, sins with women, right? Zina, watching filthy things online. And... Akhi, how long does that pleasure of that sin last for? Billahi alayk. Whatever sin you do, you smoke weed maybe, 
Maybe steal something. Take what? Cheat to buy a jacket or a pair of trainers. Mock someone. You insult someone. Disrespect your mum. Whatever sin that you do, how long does the pleasure last for? How long does it last for? Days? Months? Minutes. Minutes. <coughs> Wallahi. Woe to a person. He's going to give up Jannah for a what? Pleasure that lasts just a few minutes. And when he goes into the hellfire, even those few minutes are going to be wiped out. You buy a new jacket. How long does it feel new for? Huh? How long does it feel new for, brothers? A day or two. Buy a new car. How long? First week, making sure nothing gets scratched. A couple weeks, months later, you intentionally just curb it. Akhi, is it worth cheating, lying, stealing for something that didn't even last? A long time. So one of the ways to help you overcome the sin, ya ikhwa, is that remind yourself it's going to be over in a few minutes. It's going to be over in a few minutes. The pleasure. But you might suffer a punishment for Allah knows how long. <coughs> the people who enjoyed the pleasure in this life Allah said about them uh, that on the day of judgment it's going to be said to them أَذْهَبَ الطَّيِّبَاتِكُمْ فِي حَيَاتِكُمْ الدُّنْيَا وَاسْتَمْتَعْتُمْ بِهَا In Jannah you have women In Jannah you have rivers of wine rivers of honey In Jannah you have what? Each one is a king the, the, the lowest man in Jannah has a kingdom the size of ten kingdoms in, of, a, of a king in, in this world. So you're chilling in Jannah. But the ones who wanted kingdom in this world, they wanted to be high in this world. They wanted money here. I'm not saying money is bad, but they went through haram to get it. They wanted women here. They wanted to blind follow men as opposed to the Prophet. ﷺ. Worship their desires instead of worshipping Allah. And then they went about sin. Allah says, The pleasures have gone. You used it. In the worldly life, that's where you enjoyed women. You've enjoyed women. You used to watch them online. Filthy websites. So you used to go and speak with them and link them. And music. You've enjoyed the pleasures of the ears. The pleasures of the tongue, drinks, food. You, you, you've done that in the world. You enjoyed it. You enjoyed that woman, right? You enjoyed that money that was haram, right? You enjoyed that respect and reputation, that little social media clout you had for a second. You enjoyed that, right? اليوم, but today, today you're going to be given a punishment that is going to be humiliating. So is it worth it, Akhi? Is it worth leaving this masjid today and you still have those females on your WhatsApp? Is it worth it, Akhi? Look at me when I talk to you. And I ask you this question as a brother who is genuinely concerned. Is it worth it, Akhi? Look into my eyes. Leaving this place today, this house of Allah. You go to the hospital when your heart is sick, right? This is the hospital for the hearts, the spiritual hearts. You've come here, we've come here, I've come here, our hearts are sick. Is it worth leaving this place and you still have those sins on your phone? You still have the Spotify app on your phone. 
You still have TikTok. Well, you know, the moment you go onto that app, Akhi, don't say to me, don't say to me, Akhi, please, don't say to me, I follow Islamic pages. Akhi, the moment you come onto your page, you're bombarded with filthy things. You know why? Because the algorithm knows that you like that nasty stuff. That's why it shows it to you. You know how to expose every single person right now? Pull out your Instagram, pull out your TikTok and go to your feed, go to your explore page. What is the algorithm showing you? Half naked girls? Because it knows that's what you like. That's what you creep. That's what you watch. When no one else can see you. Allah sees you though. So isn't it smart just to get rid of it? Is it worth it, Akhi? Is it worth it? Is it worth it? And to the parents that are here, uncles, brothers, or like elders, may Allah have mercy on you and your children. Don't give them access to these phones and these apps. Wallahi, you're going to send your children to destruction with your own hands. Do not give them to give a child a phone, to give them an iPad. We talk about who is stressed about what they show our kids in school? Pictures are going around about books that are being taught in primary school, right? They're teaching kids filthy things. Yes? We're all stressed, right? What's worse than the school that he goes to for six hours is the phone that he's with 24 hours a day that you gave him. At least in the school, there's some limits. At least in the school, he comes back home. That phone, you have no control. Why give him the phone? Why give your children the phone? Because you want a break? Because you want some time off? That's selfish. It is upon you to guard your phones. The hadith mentioned كَفَى بِالْمَرْءِ إِثْمٌ أَنْ يُضَيِّئَ حَقَّ مَنْ يَعُولَ أو كما قال It's sufficient for a man for him to be considered sinful and for him to have sin for him to forsake the rights of the ones he was supposed to take care of his family and on the day of judgment you'll be asked you'll be asked Jannah is haram for what? The one who forsake the rights of his family members. Fathers. Why are we fathers? We just work what? So that the money that we earn at the end makes its way out of the backsides of our family members into the toilet bowl. Our money goes what? Either into the toilet bowl or into the bin. That food that you work so hard for your children, for your family. May Allah bless you for doing that. And it's a big thing, wallahi. But that money that you, that you, that you, that you, the food that you brought, that shopping from Tesco, hundreds of pounds, when it's on the plate, what your child takes in, it goes into the toilet bowl. And what he leaves goes into the bin. Is there anything from your wealth, except what you ate and came out of you? Or the clothes that you bought them that worn out that wore out. So is there not more that we have to do for our children than just what? Feed them, clothe them, cloak them? Should we not teach our children Quran? Should we not teach them Sunnah? Should we not teach them Adab? Allah Musta'an. The truth of the matter is that raising your children in this country is the problem. But then who will listen? You know one thing One thing I respect about the Somali community One thing I respect about them yeah. Somalis A lot of them they came here Because of problems in their country Civil war whatnot, So on and so forth Then others started to come after that Because of what First world country Business This that We can grow Whatever have you Somalis realised very quickly The mistake that they made well, I go speak to the uncles and the aunties that say, Wallahi, we should have never come here. We should have never brought our children here. Am I lying? Have you they will say to you, Wallahi, made a mistake. 
even then, it's a problem. But at least they realise our people. When I say our, I mean Pakistanis, Bengalis. We didn't. We're still no, no. Back home, they don't give you benefits. At least we get benefits here. Eh? No, 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 no. He's got dari, bid. Six fist, Allahumma barik. Ne, 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 NHSCR. Okay. NHS and your son is impregnant in kafir women. And your daughter is sleeping around with kafir men. And your son, it's not, it's not a joke, brothers. Well, I'm not making, this is not funny. You know, when you say that, it should bring pain to your hearts. I went to a prison to visit a brother who was in unjustly. And I won't mention which country. It was from, it was a Desi country, right? It was a young, miskeen, skinny boy. And uh, his parents, mashallah, uncle with a beard, mother with hijab. I said to the brother, I said, what's this guy in for? He said, bro, kidnap him, bro. He's he's got 14 years. He said, kidnapped a boy, tortured him, ransom, tried to hold him ransom. 14 years. And I just looked at the mum and dad thinking, religious people are lying, but look at their children. Let's not act like they are not responsible for coming here in the first place. And when you came, wait, let me get out. To be in prison in the land of the Muslims is better than what being a king in the land of the Kuffar. Okay, they'll take your deen away here. They want your religion. They want your religion. وَلَن تَرْضَ عَنْكَ الْيَهُودِ وَلَن نَصَارَ حَتَّى تَتَّبِعَ مِلَّتْهُمْ Allah! Allah, He told you. Allah, your Lord, your Rabb told you. They will never be pleased with you until you leave your religion and follow theirs. No, we can work with the Kuffar. We can assimilate with the Kuffar. We have to connect with the Kuffar. Ah, the hell with the Kuffar. They want you to leave your religion. And do we not see that happening today? We ask Allah to guide them and guide us. I mean, likewise, the Prophet mentioned the man who's dipped inside paradise for a second. And he's a man who suffered the most in this dunya. He suffered the most in this dunya. He'll be put inside paradise for what? One second. He'll be asked, have you ever seen suffering or pain? And he'll say, never. Why? Because one dip in paradise will wipe away any memory of what? Any sin. Shall we talk about the women of Jannah, brothers? What Allah says about them. وَزَوَّجَنَاهُمْ بِحُورٍ عِينٍ And we will marry them off to women with these beautiful eyes. Allah. أَزْوَاجًا مُطَهَّرُونَ Pure. وَكَوَاعِبَ أَتْرَابَ What does that mean, huh? That's for another day. You got a rat on the poster that day, brothers only. I need permission slips from the youngsters, from their parents. <laughs> I don't mind, I will literally tell the sisters in front of me. This is what that is says. <laughs> but um, today we're here, brothers, for the fit. A long hadith, the Prophet ﷺ talks about the journey of the soul when it dies. In hadith, Al Bara ibn Azib radiallahu anhu said, Kharajana ma'a Rasulillahi ma'a Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Bara ibn Azib, he says, one day. We left with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Fi janazati rajuli min al-ansar There was a man from the Muslims of Medina From the Ansar And he was what? He was being buried Fantahina ila al-qabr We came to his grave With his body to the grave Walamma yulhad When we put him inside of his grave And we covered him Fajalasa al-Nabiyu Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam The Prophet sat by the grave وَجَلَسْنَا حَوْلَهُ And then we sat around the Prophet ﷺ. كَنَّ عَلَى رُؤُوسِنَا الطَّيْرِ It was as if there were birds on our heads. We were that still, we didn't move. وَفِي يَدِهِ عُودٌ يَنْكُتُ بِهِ فِي الْأَرْضِ The Prophet had a stick in his hand and he was putting on the earth. فَرَفَعَ رَأْسَهُ The Prophet lifted up his head. He looked 
and faced the companions. He lifted his head, Afan. Faqal, he said, and the Prophet said, Ista'idu billahi min al qabr. He said, Seek refuge in Allah. From what? Min adab al qabr, from the punishment of the grave. Ask Allah to protect you from the punishment in the grave. And he repeated it what? Twice or three times. Thumma then the Prophet said, and he describes the situation of the good person, the good soul when he dies. He said, Inna la abdel mu'min, that the slave who is a believer, Ida kana fi qita'in min al dunya wa iqbalin min al akhirah, when he is about to leave this world, his body is about to what? depart from his soul. And when that's happening, Nazala ilayhi malaika. The angels, they start to descend and come down to him. Mina samai, bidul wujud. They come from the sky, bright faces. Ka'anna wujuhahum as shams. As if their faces are what? Suns. Glowing like stars. Ma'ahum kafanun. They have a white, they have a shroud. You know the body, what do you do? You put the body in a sheet and you put it in the grave, right? So they have a sheet, a shroud for the soul. And this is what? Min akfan il jannah. It's from the shrouds of paradise. Wa hanut min hunut il jannah. And a fragrance from the fragrance of paradise. Right? Hata yajidisu min hu madd al basar. They sit around the person's body, the one who is about to die. Thumma yuji'u malak al maut. And then the angel of death comes. Hata yajidisu in the ra'sihi. The angel of death will come and sit by the head of the person. فيقول, he will say, أُخْرُجِي أَيَّتُهَا النَّفْسِ الْمُطْمَئِنَّةِ He will say, come out. <coughs> you peaceful soul. You beautiful soul. Come out. أُخْرُجِي Come out. إِلَى مَغْفِرَةٍ مِنَ اللَّهِ وَرِضْوَانِ Come out to the forgiveness of Allah and His pleasure. فتخرج تسيل كما تسيل القطرة من في السقاء. أو كما قال. It will come out of the body. The soul will come out the way a drop of water comes out of a jug. Look how look how look how smoothly this is. If I was to what pour this drop, it comes out with no resistance. Look at that. Right? It comes out what? With no resistance. Very smooth, right? فَيَأْخُذُهَا He grabs it. The angel of death, he grabs the soul. فَإِذَا أَخَذَ لَمْ يَدْعُوا لَمْ يَدْعُوهَا فِي يَدِهِ طَرْفَةَ عَيْنَ حَتَّى يَأْخُذُوهَا فَيَجْعَلُوهَا فِي ذَلِكَ الْكَفِنِ He quickly takes what? That soul and he puts it inside of that sheet that was from Jannah. وَفِي ذَلِكَ الْكَفَنْ وَفِي ذَلِكَ الْحَنُوطِ And the fragrance. فَيَخْرُجُ مِنْهُ كَأَطْ فَيَخْرُجُ مِنْهَا كَأَطْ يَبِي نَفْحَةِ مَسْكٍ وُجِدَتْ عَلَى وَجْهِ الْأَرْضِ The most beautiful smell of misk is going to come out from it that has ever been found on the face of the earth. فَيَصْعَدُونَ بِهَا Then the angel of death is what? With the other angels that are women? What are they going to do? They're going to take this soul in the sheet from Jannah and they're going to go to the sky with it. They're going to rise. فَلَا يَمُرُّونَ بِهَا عَلَى مَلَأِ مِنَ الْمَلَائِكَةِ إِلَّا قَالُوا They're not going to pass to any group of angels except every group of angels they pass. They're going to say to them, مَا هَذَا الرُّوحَ الطَّيِّبِ They're going to say, what is this beautiful soul? They can smell it. They can smell it. It's this beautiful soul, right? What is it? فيقولون, they will say, فلان ابن فلان, this is so and so, the son of so and so. بأحسن أسمائي التي كانوا يسمونها بها في الدنيا. They will call it by the most beautiful names that he was known by in the dunya. Some of you are known as a truthful one. Some of you are known as the one who's always looking after his mom. Some of you are known as what? The one who's always in a masjid. Yeah, that act, he's always in a masjid. That's the brother who seeks knowledge. That's the brother who went to Egypt. They came back. The angels are going to call him by the beautiful names that he was known by. حَتَّى يَنْتَهُ بِهَا إِلَى السَّمَاءِ الدُّنْيَا Until they're going to come to the first heaven. Okay? 
there's a door, they won't be able to go through it. فَيَسْتَفْتَحُونَ لَهُ They're going to ask permission, can you open the door so we can take this soul up towards Allah? فَيُفْتَحُ لَهُ It will be open. فَيُشَيِّعُهُ مِن كُلِّ سَمَاءٍ مُقَرَّبُوهَا إِلَى السَّمَاءِ إِلَّتِي تَلِيهَا Every time this what? Soul goes up to the next heaven, more angels come. Say, what is this? And every time an angels, group of angels come, they follow this soul. You know, like when there's a janazah, there's a body passing, what does everyone do? They run to it, so they can what? Take it to the grave. So all of the angels are rushing to this soul. It goes up, next group comes, they join. They go up, the next group comes, they join. <coughs> they take them up. <coughs> Until they go to the seventh heaven. فيقول <coughs> Allah Azza wa Jal and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say, Uktubu kitaba abdi fi illiyin. Write my slave's book in the illiyin, which is for the righteous people. Wa'iduhu ila al ard. And send his soul back to the earth. Send it back to the earth, because he has to go to the grave. Fa'inni minha khalaqtuhum. Because certainly it is from the earth that I made them. Wafiha u'iduhum. And it's back to the earth that I will turn them. Wa minha ukhrijuhum taratun ukhra. And I will resurrect them out of this grave. فَتُعَادُ رُوحَ فَتُعَادُ This soul will be what? فَتُعَادُ It will be returned back. Now the soul will go back into the body. It will go to the body the moment the body is put in the grave. It happens at the same time. So you know as you're burying a body. You know a person's dead, you're washing his body, you're carrying the janazah, you're praying salah on him. His soul is in jannah. His whole soul is in the skies. Sorry, not in jannah, but in the skies. And the moment you put his body in the grave, the soul returns back and the soul meets what? The body, the moment it's in the grave. فَيَأْتِيهِ malakan. Now he's in the grave, two angels will come. فَيَجْلِسَانِهِ They're going to make this person sit up. Get up, get up, get up, get up, get up, get up. فَيُقُولَانِ لَهُ They're going to say, مَنْ رَبُّكْ Who is your Lord? فيقول هو سيربي الله عز وجل ما لود الله. guys what does لود mean means رب means master. a master has to have a slave. can you say that you are slaves of Allah if you are enslaved to dunya. a master his slave obeys him yes or no. so can you say you are really Allah's slave and disobey him. Are you going to be able to answer this question in the grave if you didn't really live as a slave to the master? It's a question to think about. فَيَقُولَانِ لَهُ They will say, مَا دِينُكْ What is your religion? فَيَقُولُ دِينُ الْإِسْلَامِ Our religion is al-Islam. فَيَقُولَانِ لَا مَا هَذَا الرَّجُلَ الَّذِي بُعِثَ فِيكُمْ They will say, Who is this man that was sent to you? فَيَقُولُ هُوَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم He's the messenger of Allah. فَيَقُولَانِ لَهُ They will say, How many questions is that so far? Huh? How many questions are in the grave, brothers? No, there's four. This hadith is sahih, authentic, in the Muslim of Ahmed. Yeah, if we don't even know how many questions there are. This is a test. Does this not show the importance of seeking knowledge? Can we really say that we know? Fourth question, the Prophet gave us the answer. And this is a famous hadith, by the way. This is a very famous hadith. This is the... Long hadith that talks about the journey of the soul. وَمَا عِلْمُكَ What was your knowledge? That's the fourth question. فَيَقُولْ They will say, He will say, قَرَأْتُ كِتَابَ اللَّهِ I read the book of Allah. فَآمَنْتُ بِهِ And I believed in it. وَصَدَّقْتُ I believed in it. فَيُنَادِ مُنَادٍ مِنَ السَّمَاءِ A call will call from the sky. And صَدَقَ عَبْدِي My slave has spoken the truth. فَأَفْرِشُوهُ مِنَ الْجَنَّةِ And then what? He'll be told, Give him a bed from the beds, a place to lie down from Jannah. jannah. Give him clothing from the clothes of Jannah. jannah. And open for him a door to Jannah. قال, and then the Prophet said, It will come to him from the pleasures of paradise. What? فَيُفْسَحُ لَهُ فِي قَبْرِهِ مَدَّ بَصَرِهِ His grave will be opened. You know, the grave seems tight. For him, it will be opened wide. 
as far as eyes can see. And a man will come to visit him in the grave. In your grave, a man will come to you. Hasan al Waj, he will have a beautiful face. Hasan al Thiyab, beautiful clothes. Tayyib al Rih, he will have a beautiful smell. Fayakul, he will be told, he will say to him, Abshid bil ladhi yasurruka, hadha yawmu kaladhi kunta tu'ad. He will say, Glad tidings to you. This is the day that you were promised you're going to become happy now. Who is this man? The man will say, Man ant. The person in the grave says, Who are you? فَوَجْهُ كَلْ وَجْهِ يَجِيءُ بِالْخَيْرِ You have the face of a man that's going to bring me good. فَيَقُولْ The man will say, أَنَا عَمَلُكَ أنا 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 الصَّالِحِ He will say, I am your righteous actions. Your righteous actions are your best friend. They're going to come to you in your grave. Your family is going to leave you. Your wife's going to leave you. That girl that you're crying over is going to leave you. Going to go marry another man. Going to say, I love you, babe. Your children are going to be raised by another man. They're going to call another man dad. She's going to go and bring another man to your bedroom. And you're in your grave. Are you going to have righteous actions that are going to accompany you, ya akhi? Or is that you're too busy chasing the world that you didn't actually have time to accumulate righteous actions? The man will become so happy, he will say, Rabbi aqli misa'a, Rabbi aqli misa'a, my Lord, bring the day of judgment now, bring the day of judgment now, hatta arja, hatta arja. Until I go back to my what? My family and my world. My brothers, I'm conscious that I've gone over time. I've gone over long, much, but I haven't gone through the last part of the hadith, which is the evil soul. If you guys would prefer me to not go over it and let you guys rest, I'm happy to end it now, inshallah. You guys would like to carry on? Yeah? Even the ones in the back? Yeah? Khair, inshallah. Pardon? They're all awake. They're all awake, yeah? Okay, alhamdulillah. Khair, inshallah. We'll, then we'll go through this and then we'll end. The Prophet said, وَإِنَّ الْعَبْدَ الْكَافِرِ But as for the slave that was a disbeliever, إِذَا كَانَ فِي انْقِطَاعِ مِنَ الدُّنْيَا When he's about to leave this world, وَإِقْبَالِ مِنَ الْآخِرَةِ He's facing the next life. نَزَلَ إِلَيْهِ مِنَ السَّمَاءِ مَلَائِكَةِ The angels are going to come down to this evil soul from the sky. Dark faces. They're going to sit around him. So what he can see. And when they do so, then the angel of death is going to come until he sits by the head of this evil person. And when he comes and he sits by his head, he will say, Oh, you filthy soul. You filthy soul, Ukhruji, come out. Ila sakhatin min Allahi wa ghadab to the displeasure of Allah and His anger. Come out. Now, this soul will know. If it comes out, it's gonna get punished. Fatafarraku fi jasadi. It's gonna what? Go inside of the body. The soul's gonna hold on tight inside the body. It doesn't wanna leave. Fayantaziru, and it's gonna be ripped out. Allah says in the ayah in the Quran, وَلَوْ تَرَى إِذِ الظَّالِمُونَ فِي غَمَرَاتِ الْمَوْتِ If only you could see the evil people at the time of death when they're suffering at death. وَلَوْ تَرَى إِذِ الظَّالِمُونَ فِي غَمَرَاتِ الْمَوْتِ وَالْمَلَائِكَةُ بَاسِطُوا أَيْدِيهِمْ And the angels, they stretch out their hands. What do they say? أَخْرِجُوا أَنفُسَكُمْ Come out! Come out! Today you're going to be punished, a humiliating punishment. Another ayah Allah says, They're going to be slapping their faces and striking their backs, saying, Come out! Telling the soul, What? Come out. <coughs> and the soul will desperately try to stay in. فَيَنْتَزِعُهَا 
is going to be ripped out. The way what? You take out minisuf al mubattal. The way you have a thorn, a stick with thorns. Imagine it was wrapped around wool. Wool which is wet. And you take that stick with thorns and you rip it out. What happens to the wool? Rips. That's what, that's what it's like when the sword is ripped out of the body. Because it's holding onto the body. إِذَا أَخَذَهَا لَمْ يَدْعُوهَا فِي يَدِهِ لَمْ يَدْعُوهَا فِي يَدِهِ طَرْفَةَ عَيْنًا حَتَّى يَجْعَلُوهَا فِي تِلْكَ, الم... في تلك الْمُسُوحِ وَيَخْرُجُ مِنْهَا A smell is going to come out of this soul. كَأَنْتَنِ رِيحِ جِيفَ The worst smell that could ever come out of a dead body. If you leave a dead body for a few days, the stench that comes from it is indescribable. And the worst smell that can come out of this dead body will come out of the soul. Bujidat ala wajhil ard that can never be found on earth. Fayasaduna biha falaya muruna biha ala mala imina malaikati illa kalu maha the ruh al khadith. The angels are going to take the soul to the sky. Same. Every time the angels, they go by it because they can smell its nasty smell. They'll say, what is this filthy soul? فيقولون, the angels say, فلان فلان. It is the son. It is so-and-so, the son of so-and-so. بأقبح أسمائه التي كان يسمى بها في الدنيا He's going to be called by the filthiest names he was known in this world. أخي, if you're known as a liar, Imagine your soul is being taken up. You're screaming, crying. Your body's dead now. You used to find clout and people calling you the hardest man on the block. The one who had what? The biggest drug line. The guy who was the womanizer, the one who had the most women. You found pride in that. Now the angels are telling you, oh, this is the womanizer. This is the drug dealer. This is the fraudster. This is the liar, the criminal. The one who disrespects. This is the one who used to disrespect his mom. The one who missed prayers. This is the nasty one. It's going to refer to you by that. And then the soul will come to the first heaven. Remember, it has to ask permission to go through the door, right? The angels will say, Can you let us through? Or they will, they will come there. And they will not be given permission to let the soul through. And then the Prophet recited the ayah, لا تفتح لهم أبواب السماء ولا يدخلون الجنة حتى يلج الجمل في سم الخياط. That the gates of paradise of the of the heavens will never ever open for them. They will never go to paradise. It's impossible for them to go to paradise. حتى يلج الجمل في سم الخياط. And then. فَتُعَادُ رُوحُهُ The soul will what? It will be thrown. It will fall from the skies and will fall into the grave at the time that the person is in the grave. وَيَأْتِهِ مَلَكَانِ Two angels are going to come to him. Same angels. فَيُجْلِسَانِ They're going to make him sit up. Sit up! Sit up! Get up! فَيَقُولَانِ لَهُ They will say to him مَنْ رَبُّكُ هُوَ الْجَلُودِ فَيَقُولْ هَا هَا لَا أَدْرِي He will say I don't know مَا هَذَا الرَّجُلَ الَّذِي بُعِثَ فِيكُمْ Who is this man that was sent to you? فَيَقُولْ هَا هَا لَا أَدْرِي I don't know And then He will be asked what is your deen Before that story he will say likewise I don't know فَيُنَادِي مُنَادٍ مِنَ السَّمَاءِ A caller will then call from the sky and say, كَذَبَ عَبْدِي My slave has lied. فَأَفْرِشُوهُ مِنْ نَارِ Give him a bed from fire. وَمِنْ جَهَنَّمَ مِهَادٌ Their blankets are from fire. Their beds are from fire. Their mattresses are from fire. وَمِنْ فَوْقِهِمْ غَوَاشْ And the blanket on top of them is like fire. It's from fire. وَأَلْبِسُهُ مِنْ نَارِ Give him the clothes from fire. Dress him in fire. Make him wear the fire. 
وافتحوا له بابا الى النار ان اوبن فيما الدور تدهو فيا فياتيه من حرها its heat will come to him وسمومها its flames fumes the poison ويضيق عليه قبره his what his grave will tighten on him حتى تختلف فيه اضلاعه until his ribs will what overcome like this ويأتيه رجل أمام وكم تهم قبيح الوجه الثوثي فيس قبيح الثياب ناستي كلودز منتن الريح الناستي سمو فيقول هو سيأبشر بالذي يسوءك he said I give you the glad tidings of that which will what you hate that will make you not happy هذا يومك this is your day الذي كنت توعد the one that you were promised you were told you will see this day if you carry on sinning carry on disobeying Allah you were told you see this day فيقول the man will say in his grave من أنت who are you فوجهك الوجه you have the face يجيء بالشر you brought me evil فيقول the man will say أنا عملك الخبيث I am you Filthy actions, your nasty actions. I am all the sins that you used to do. فيقول, then the man will say, "Rabbi, la tuqim al-sa'ah." My Lord, do not let the day of judgment come. ثم يقيد له أعمى أصم. Another narration mentions a man will be placed over, a creature will be placed over him, a creature. له أعمى, he's blind. أصم. He can't hear. Abkam, this creature can't speak. Fi yadihi mirzabbah. In his hand is what? A hammer. Lo duriba biha jabalan. Kana taraba. If a mountain was to be struck by this hammer, it would turn to dust. Fa yadribuhu darbatan. The man will be smacked, a hard smack. Fa yasiru turaban. His body will what become dust. ثم يعيد الله عز وجل كما كان. Then Allah will cause his body to come back and become whole again. فيضربه ضربة أخرى. And then he'll be smacked with this hammer by this creature another time. فيصيح صيحة. And he'll scream a loud scream. يسمعها. Everyone will hear it. يسمعها كل شيء إلا الثقلين. Everything will hear it except for the humans and the jinn. Have you guys seen that video online of a brother who takes a parrot, uh, uh, a bird to a graveyard? He takes a graveyard and he takes the graveyard to the graves of the uh, kuffar, and the bird starts screaming. Have you seen it? ثم يفتح له باب إلى النار. And then a door is opened to him from paradise. وَيُمْهَدُ له مِنْ فُرُشِ النَّارِ He's given a bed from fire. Then Imam Ibn Qayyim goes on and on and on to mention many narrations. There's just one last narration I would like to mention, inshallah ta'ala, before I conclude. The Prophet Wasallam in the, in the Musnad, in the hadith is mentioned, where the Prophet said, مَنْ مَاتَ مُدْمِنَ الْخَمَرِ Whoever dies and he used to consistently drink alcohol. By the way, alcohol is haram because of the intoxicants. You may not drink alcohol, but you smoke weed. If you take it consistently, this can apply to you. But imagine you're not one who takes it, but you sell it. You're even worse now. You supply it. You what? You supply it. Men, ma tamud min al khamar. Whoever dies and he was consistently taking these intoxicants, alcohol, we can understand from it, drugs. سَقَاهُ اللَّهُ مِنْ نَهْرِ الْغُوطَى Allah will make him drink from the river of Ghuta. The river of Ghuta is a river in hell. قِيلَ وَمَا نَهْرُ الْغُوطَى The Prophet was asked, What is this river of Al-Ghuta? What is it? And the Prophet said, Nahar, it's a river. Yajri, it flows. 
bin furuj al mumisat. It flows from the private parts of the prostitutes. Yu'zi ahl al nar rihu furujihin. Their private parts will have such a disgusting smell. Everyone in paradise who's being punished, who themselves have nasty smells coming out of them, are going to say, that is a nasty smell. Now, pay attention. What's flowing out of the bodies of the people of Hellfire? Pus. Blood. Why does, it, why, why does a person bleed? Why does pus come out of you guys? Why? Did you just bleed naturally? Why do you bleed? When you are? Pardon? When you're wounded. So in, power, in Hellfire, these people are being wounded. They're being wounded. They're being ripped. And their blood is coming out. And they sweat and they pus. These prostitutes have also got blood and pus coming out of their private parts. So they're being wounded. Now the hadith doesn't mention it directly, but what we understand, they're being tortured where they used to do the haram from. Which is a reminder for everyone who does this filthy act of zina. Al Jaza'u min jinsil amal. You will be treated the way you behaved. You still, in the Sharia, your hand is what? Cut. You take the life of a person, of a Muslim unjustly, in the Sharia. Of course, I don't want anyone to start chopping anyone's hand because we don't live in a Sharia country. But if you live in, in the, in the, under the law of Allah, then your life will be forfeited because of the life that you took. Likewise, you committed crimes with your private parts. It's your private parts that's going to suffer. So the ones who used to like to drink alcohol, they're going to drink that filth that comes out of that filthy woman. And let the women and the men know who do that evil that they will be tortured. And those women will have blood and pus and all of that nastiness coming out and there will be so much that it will create a river that the sinners, some of the sinners will drink from. Ikhwa, with that said, Naam, Allah is very forgiving and merciful. He is and He will forgive all of your sins if you make Tawbah. But you have to actually make a sincere Tawbah. You have to leave everything behind. You have to cut it off. You have to regret the evil that you did. But please don't for, your, for a second think to yourself that you can go about life just doing whatever you want and you're going to be okay. I will leave you with a statement from Imam Abu Wafa. Ibn Aqil. He said, Ihbarhu. He said, Be warned of Allah. Wala taghtar. And don't be deceived. Fainahu qata'a al yad fi thalathati darahim. He commanded for what? Your hand to be cut just by stealing three silver coins. Akhi. <coughs> Just by stealing a phone, your hand can be cut. Less than a phone, your hand can be cut, akhi. Is that small? The Prophet said, Wallahi, if my daughter Fatima stole, I would cut her hand off myself. That's the, that's the hukum of Allah. There's no two ways. If you get caught, your hand's gone. So now Allah is forgiving and He's merciful. But for just three dirham, he decreed that your hand be cut. وَجَلَدَ الْحَدْ فِي مِثْلِ رَأْسِ الْإِبْرَةِ مِنَ الْخَمَرِ Drinking a little bit of alcohol. Little bit. The result is for you to be what? Lashed on your back. وَقَدْ دَخَلَتْ إِمْرَأَةٌ وَقَدْ دَخَلَتْ, وقد دخلت إِمْرَأَةٌ النَّارَ فِي هِرَّةٌ A woman was placed in hellfire because she tortured a cat. A cat. So don't torture human beings. Don't violate human beings. Right? وَاشْتَعَلَتْ الشَّمْلَةُ نَارٌ عَلَى مَنْ غَلَّهَا وَقَدْ قُتِلَ شَهِيدًا There was a man at the time of the Prophet ﷺ. He died in battle as a martyr, as a shaheed, right? 
And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam He said he's in hell Because he stole something From the wall booty So Na'am Allah is very merciful and forgiving But he ordered for your hand to be chopped If you steal three silver coins And for your back to be lashed 80 times If I'm not mistaken For a small bit of alcohol A woman was put in hellfire For torturing a cat and a man who died in battle went to hell because he stole something. So is it easy, brothers? Are these sins easy or are they big? Massive. Fadil ibn Iyad said, don't look at how, some of the Salaf would say, sorry, don't look at how small the sin is. Look at how great the one you made the sin against is. And Fadil ibn Iyad used to say, every time you belittle a sin before Allah, Allah sees it as a big thing. So the punishment is greater. And every time you make a sin very big that you did, you make a big deal out of a sin that you did, it becomes small to Allah. He said, I'm going to let it go. Akhi, all of your sins, Allah can forgive you. But you have to earn that forgiveness. Inna ladina amin. Certainly those who have iman. إِنَّ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَالَّذِينَ هَاجَرُوا وَجَاهَدُوا فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ أُولَٰئِكَ يَرْجُونَ رَحْمَةَ اللَّهِ Who hopes for Allah's mercy? Allah says, the ones who do righteous deeds. If you're not doing righteous deeds, there's no hope. Hope is for the one who does. Who's trying, who's fighting. Fighting! My brothers, I can guarantee to you almost, and I hope I'm incorrect here, but I've been doing that for over 10 years. And everything is just a consistent cycle. If you do not remove the sins that you're connected to through your phones, now, today, before going home, it's going to be hard. And you don't know if you're ever going to come back into a masjid. Your body might not die. But your heart might. And that's the worst death. Please. Do the right thing.